Good morning, Santa Clarita. Welcome in. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCDI and I lead school's Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson. Our show, Eye on the Valley, is brought to you by SCDI and I lead schools. We are a network of charter schools with campuses in Castaic, Agua Dulce, Lancaster. We've also got a fully accredited online school. That's right. Kindergarten through 12th grade online. They're doing amazing things out there at iLead Online. And we've also got a burgeoning homeschool program, iLead Exploration. For information on our homeschool, our online school, our campus-based schools, you can visit us at iLeadSchools.org. So we've got our eye on education in Santa Clarita and across the nation. But like our show says, we also keep our eye on the valley as well, bringing you everything you need to know about what's what here in the valley. And we do it all while having a lot of fun. Looking forward to today's show. Today's show should be lots of fun. Love the giggles, love the laughs while we're taking care of business as well. Well, happy Friday, everybody. You know, the city announced yesterday concerts in the park are back. Woohoo! Super excited. July 3rd, we've got uh, the Petty Breakers, uh, Tom Petty tribute band, going to be out there at Central Park. So, Kind of getting back online. Uh, very excited to have these uh, these different events coming back while uh, we're still making sure that uh, that we're following guidelines and, and keeping everybody safe so that we can continue to stay back, right? Because it's no good coming back if you can't stay back. So it's going to be a great day. We're sliding into a weekend. The Dodgers are back in town. They got the Padres. And, uh, well, we've got a fantastic show for you today. We've got the Director of Emergency Services at Henry Mayo, Dr. Bud Lawrence. We'll be uh, checking in with him in just a minute or so. We'll also check in with Wendy Ruiz. Wendy, if you remember, is the Director of Little Eye Leaders. That's uh, I Lead School's preschool there in, in Castaic. And so they're taking care of your littles. They are up and running. And, and we'll see how her and her team and, and the littles are doing out there. We've also got Big T back in his normal slot this morning. Coming with the trivia and the laughs, we're going to see if we can coax Engineer Andrew in here to, to, to see if I can take him this time. So it's going to be a great show. Grab a cup of coffee, settle in, let's have some fun. My first guest, as I said, is the Director of Emergency Services at Henry Mayo Newhall Hospital. Dr. Bud Lawrence is a graduate of UCLA. Go Bruins! And he attended Keck USC School of Medicine. He began his career at Henry Mayo in 2003 as an attending emergency medicine physician. Dr. Lawrence was very involved in, in many emergency department quality related projects early on and was quickly appointed as the emergency department director of risk management. Currently the director of, of the emergency department, as I said, <coughs> Dr. Lawrence is also the owner of the Henry Mayo Urgent Care Center, where my father is racking up frequent flyer miles at the clip that's going to will put Dr. Lawrence's kids through college. Dr. Lawrence, welcome back to the show. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, it's a pleasure to have you back. You're always a wonderful guest. You're always so gracious. We've had you on a couple of times now, and and, and you've been great. Uh, we talked back in June, you know, as, as we were all kind of heading into the summer and, and infection rates were starting to climb a little bit, and then you came back in January when we were kind of at the peak of the holiday spike. Um, so... Even though you guys were, were really taking in a lot of COVID patients, you were handling it. You guys uh, uh, found the space to, to take care of things. You were doing a great job. And things have calmed down quite a bit now. So, uh, so how are things out at the hospital? Is it pretty much back to normal now, or, or are we still kind of on uh, yellow alert? You know, things are definitely much, much better than they were in that December, January time frame where really, truly COVID was epicenter, uh, or actually Los Angeles was the epicenter of COVID in the world. Um, things have definitely calmed down a little bit. So during those really busy months, there were days where we would have 120 patients in the hospital or more with, with COVID-19. And now over the past, I would say, month or so or even longer, uh, our numbers have been as low as two patients in the hospital. Uh, we are seeing a slight increase in our COVID volume. So our patients in the hospital now, that number is around anywhere from maybe 7 to 11. Um, but that's not, that's not unexpected for me because I feel that as we open things up, 
is almost you're going to have more people getting together and you're going to have uh, more more community cases and so a little uptick in numbers is certainly expected and not abnormal uh, but those numbers relative to when we were really in that crush are are absolutely manageable and as you said we were able to even handle uh, when we were getting just hammered with COVID, we were able to handle those volumes mostly in part to our new tower, uh, which has been a godsend and really has carried us through this pandemic, um, and uh, and the hospital's preparedness plan. I mean, this hospital, I, I would say, you know, is it, it was pre- as prepared as any hospital in this country to help serve our community during the COVID nineteen pandemic. I always love hearing stuff like that. You know, it's amazing medical care out there, but we oftentimes forget how well it's it's run administratively also. Um, but so, so yeah, you mentioned uh, as kids get back to school, as folks are going back into restaurants, yeah, things are, are, are bound to, to bump up a little bit. Hopefully we can keep it at just that, just a bump. It, it's been a long time, though. Uh, how's staff morale doing? How are the nurses, the, the doctors, everybody else out there at the hospital doing it's been a long 13 months i mean it it really has uh i would even i would even advocate that it it may be the longest 13 months of any of any healthcare workers career and maybe even life i mean it was it is just um uh, to get you know physically crushed every day emotionally crushed every day uh it is it definitely takes a toll i think that our our staff here at our hospital, physicians, uh, nurses, ancillary staff, really rose to the occasion to serve our community, and I and I and I honestly believe that the, that that we were able to do the best you know the best job possible given the circumstances, but but it really is it, it is a um, a sentinel event almost in 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 all of our lives, and we have to be cognizant of that. And I think that one of the things that sort of bubbled to the top here is is physician and nurse and hospital staff well-being from a mental health standpoint. I mean, really in those deepest, darkest days of COVID, it, it, you know, I, I have so much respect for our military. There, there are very, very, very few things that I'm scared of, and one of them would be going to war. Right. And I have so much respect for our, our men and women of the armed services that make that sacrifice for our country and and I and I honestly believe that our healthcare workers in this country as well had a, had what I have to believe to be a somewhat similar experience during this COVID-19 pandemic. So really one of the things that I'm advocating for is uh physician well-being, you know, nurse well-being, uh ancillary staff well-being so that, so that we are listening and being alert to people who might be struggling in this time. Uh and strangely the people that struggle you you wouldn't necessarily recognize it. It's it's not like they're holding a sign up that says, "Hey, help me! I've had a really uh, I I get home every night from work and I cry, or you know I can't I can't cope with this." Uh, it, it's usually uh, many layers deep, so it can be very hard very hard to sort that out. So we're we're trying to really um, pay close attention to that and really serve our serve our healthcare community. You're absolutely right, and oftentimes folks don't even realize that that they've reached levels that. Uh, that that require intervention and then oftentimes you feel guilty right because you spend your day around 100 200 people that are going through the same exact thing right so why are you so special you know that's the kind of the thought in in your head but great comparison with the military right i'm sure folks at the at the hospitals are going through their own or, or prolonged kind of uh, post traumatic issues and and dealing with stuff i know our community's been really supportive especially early on, delivering meals, water, things like that. Um, but, you know, the, the word hero is, is not hyperbolic. It certainly applies. Is there something that our community can continue to do to, to help uh, kind of care for the staff that continues to, to just put it all out there on the line every day? You know, I, I have to, I have to really say, I have to echo what you've said there. That that our our community, you know, this is a community hospital. I mean, I think probably everybody knows that this is a single hospital. We're not part of some system. We're uh, it's a it's a you know not for profit community owned hospital, and we're here for our community. And boy, was that community here for us! And that is something uh, that does not go unnoticed. As as you mentioned in the beginning of the pandemic, and through I would say this whole pandemic, we have received 
through our uh, through the Henry Mayo Newhall Hospital Foundation, so many uh, meals and and other donations and and things uh, you know um, things to increase the comfort of our our hospital staff during their shift. Uh, so many ways to support our hospital staff and 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 I think that you know um, it, I live here in this community and it makes me so proud to be part of that. And I think um, I think that we just have to remember that it's not over yet and we still do have some patients with COVID in the hospital and more importantly we still have staff that are working so hard day in and day out you know to serve our community as as we always have even outside of the COVID pandemic um, but I think I think just a continued support of our hospital staff whether whether that means maybe um, volunteering to, to bring some food in or or even if you see somebody or know somebody uh, that works at our hospital, perhaps a, an x-ray tech or a nurse or a physician, just to give them some verbal support. I think the verbal support is actually very helpful right now just to know that the community stands behind the healthcare workers and that their hard work has not gone unnoticed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just, yeah, if you know a doctor or a nurse, let them know that, uh, that you stand behind them. You, you got their back, that extra kind of... Uh, uh, Breath of air in their lungs is, is certainly helpful. Now, you guys have also really shifted and, and stepped up now that the, the vaccine is, is readily available. You guys have got your vaccine clinic right there on, uh, on, uh, on the hospital campus, and it's, it's really humming. I think you guys have partnered with a couple of other organizations, but many of the Henry Mayo nurses have been vaccinating people all day long. Have you monitored the process at all? What are your impressions on how the vaccine clinic's been going? Uh, yeah, so the vaccine clinic, actually, I, I was part of the team to help develop the vaccine clinic. Um, I'm the supervising physician uh, for the vaccine clinic. Uh, any any issues uh, come through me. Um, so I've been a very integral part of that, as have many people uh, you know, here at Henry Mayo. And, and I have to say, uh, you know, I've always been so proud of our uh, COVID preparation to serve our community this vaccine clinic is is also right up there i mean we are ostensibly the most efficient vaccine clinic in the county um there most places where you go you have to wait 45 minutes to even a few hours to get your vaccine and get out of there we usually it takes maybe 20 minutes total and 15 of that is sitting around making sure there's no reaction so we are we are hyper efficient i believe that we've already now uh, vaccinated, um, I want to say, uh, close to 40,000 people. Wow. And uh, that's a huge number for our community. Uh, we have uh, had days where we focused on educators. Um, we've, we've tried our best to help our local law enforcement, our first responders, um, really trying to grasp this idea that that we are part of the community and here to serve the community. And, and I think we've been ultra successful with that. This, this vaccine clinic has uh, really been able, I think, not only to make a difference in many people's lives to help protect them from COVID-19, but also by getting that vaccine out there, we are stopping the potential transmission of COVID from person to person, which sounds, you know, sounds simple. It sounds like, oh, yeah, well, that's what it's for. But the reality is when we're, when we're talking about things like potential variants, which are mutations that occur, uh, it's, it's just a mathematical number of how many, how many viruses there are on the planet uh, of this particular type of virus and how often they replicate. And each time they replicate, there could be a little mutation that occurs that could make the virus uh, stronger or more effective against humans. And by, by getting these vaccines in arms, we're able to stop that transmission of the virus and decrease the overall viral load, not only in our community, but on the, in the world. And hopefully that could theoretically keep us from developing some sort of crazy variant that, that becomes more of a, an issue for us. So really so proud of all the hard work that's been done at Henry Mayo for this vaccine clinic. So proud of it. And if you haven't experienced it, uh, go, go to my, myturn.com uh, is a website, I believe, uh, or it could be myturn.gov, but it, the, it's called myturn, M-Y-T-U-R-N, and schedule your appointment to get your vaccine done. Come experience our vaccine clinic and see how amazing it is. <laughs> yeah, it is myturn.ca.gov. And it there you go. You're absolutely right. Things are things are going great out there. I was out at Henry Mayo a few uh, a few weeks ago when when you were vaccinating educators and and got mine taken care of. You're absolutely right. It was quick. It was friendly. Uh, they're they're just doing a, a great job. We're talking to Dr. Bud Lawrence, Director of Emergency Services at Henry Mayo. Now, 
currently, doctor, the, the vaccine is available to everyone 16 and up, right? You talked about the, 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 the website. So anybody 16 and up can go to that website and get signed up. Uh, when the state opened up vaccine for teachers, as I said, I, I, I got mine and I'm very grateful. I got the Moderna vaccine. Um, is that the only one that you guys have got or do people have a choice now? We so we actually have the Pfizer. Um, we have the Pfizer here um, at Henry Mayo. There's oh, Pfizer and Moderna are the two. You're um, right. I did get the Pfizer. Pro- I'm probably confused. Came here. Yeah. It's all right. No, no worries. It's it's uh, it's hard to keep it all. <laughs> it's honestly hard to keep it all straight. Uh, so we have uh, we have the Pfizer vaccine, and I think it's important for people to know that the recommendation is 16 and over, but the Pfizer vaccine is uh, allows you to go down to age 16. The Moderna only allows you to go uh, currently to age 18. I, I think that will change as, as we get more research and studies. Okay. But th- th- we really only have the Pfizer vaccine. We've always had, and that's because the Pfizer vaccine requires special freezers to keep it cold. And, and, and being a hospital, uh, we, we do have the, those special freezers to help keep the product at the right temperature. So uh, we have always done Pfizer, and we will continue to, as long as we have this clinic to, to do Pfizer. There's also the John Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which I'm sure, as you're aware now, has been placed on a hold. Yeah. Um, and, and that was due to some data that was coming back saying that people were having this very special type of blood clot that was occurring uh, more frequently than, than the people at Johnson & Johnson or in the government uh, wanted to see. Um, and I don't want that to dissuade people from getting a vaccination. Um, you know, I think if you look at the numbers of people who developed this this crazy blood clot with Johnson & Johnson, uh, the numbers are very, very small and not very different from what that uh, what the incidents are, how often this blood clot occurs in the normal population. Mm-hmm. So I know that everyone's got a real heightened awareness to, oh my gosh, is is there something funky that's going to happen with these vaccines? Is something funky going to happen in terms of a side effect or, uh, in this case, a blood clot? And yes, we have to recognize any anything strange that happens. We need to track it and trend it and, and look deeper into that. But I don't know that the numbers are, are that different from the general population. So I really wouldn't be too freaked out about that. And I think that still the benefit of being vaccinated is going to over, you know, is is more uh, more important than the risk at this point uh, by by a long shot. Okay, fantastic. Like I said, we're talking with uh, Dr. Bud Lawrence, Director of Emergency Services at Henry Mayo. We will continue when we get back because we've got a lot more questions to ask you, doctor. I am Matt Watson. This is SCVI and I lead schools Eye on the Valley, and you're listening to your hometown station, KHTS. If you need help at home or at the office, call Made for You. Made for You is a locally owned, bonded, and licensed cleaning service with over 20 years of experience. All employees are vetted for your protection. No need to buy products or equipment. The Made for You staff comes complete with everything needed to make your home or office cleaner than ever. Hire Made for You one time, as needed, or an ongoing basis. No room is off limits. Laundry and ironing services are also available. Call Made for You for a free estimate. 255-2922. That's 255-2922. The anticipation of having a baby brings much excitement and hundreds of decisions. When choosing where to have your baby, choose the best. Providence St. Joseph Medical Center. The new women's pavilion combines expertly trained medical staff with luxurious labor and delivery suites and the area's most advanced neonatal intensive care unit. You and your new baby will get the best start possible. For more information and a tour, call 1-888-HEALING. The road to healing leads to Providence. Experience Frontier Toyota's all-new hot and exciting Toyota lineup. Serving the Santa Clarita Valley for over 30 years. Frontier Toyota, the Camry, Corolla, and Prius Kings. They're tops in Tacoma and Tundra trucks. Frontier Toyota, the new way of car buying. Shop from home at FrontierToyota.com or visit their showroom at Valencia and Creekside. Discover a whole new car buying experience with your friends at Frontier Toyota. Excellence isn't just a word, it is what we deliver. Vanguard Protection Group is committed to providing its clients with the highest echelon of protective services available. Our clients not only receive the security services they contract for, but also reports that are well-written, articulate, and thorough. Our patrol officers operate at the highest levels and have an impressive rapport with local law enforcement. With military, police, private policing, and courtroom experience, you can trust that we have the strength to deliver our promise of excellence. Contact Vanguard Protection by calling 661-753-3611 or visiting their website at vanguardprotectiongroup.com. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220.
Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 on the AM side. This is Matt Watson, and you're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley. We're talking with Dr. Bud Lawrence, Director of Emergency Services at Henry Mayo Newhall Hospital. Now, Dr. Lawrence, I, something struck me really hard last night as I was getting ready for the show. My whole life, pretty much literally, it's been HMNMH, Henry Mayo Newhall Memorial Hospital. And I don't know when it happened or why it happened, but you guys have dropped the memorial. What happened to memorial? Did, did we forget about old Henry Newhall or did people forget that he's, he, was, he was actually a real guy? You, we're, we're just Henry Mayo Newhall Hospital now. What happened to the memorial? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, th- I want to say that this <laughs> it's not a great probably, question. Come on, it's it, a goofy it's, question. <laughs> no, but it's real. I, you know, you look at the name of it, and it is definitely different. I, I believe it happened. I want to say five to seven years ago, there was a bit of rebranding that occurred. I think it is it, the with the memorial. The name was so very long that uh, I think there was just an effort to shorten it up a little bit to make it a little more palatable. Um, from a, uh, a speech and visual standpoint, and it it it, it does nothing to uh, detract from the greatness of uh, Henry Mayo Newhall, uh, and with nothing to disparage the name, uh, simply to shorten things up, it was a bit too much of a mouthful, as I, as I believe, uh, as I can recall, was the reason behind that. Um, but uh, but the services are still the same, if not better. Every day we try to always be better, uh, and uh, and I would say that it was just uh, more from um, a marketing standpoint, likely uh, has nothing to do uh, with much else than that. Yeah, branding is very important, but, uh, you know, if you think about it this weekend, pour one out for old Hank Newhall. Seriously, though, we were talking before about, uh, uh, before the break about vaccines, and I was speaking about uh, uh, this issue with someone at another local healthcare organization a couple of days ago, and they were working on how to handle employees who who choose not to be vaccinated, and I'm sure... That's bound to come up just about just about everywhere, especially as, as we start to come back to all our different industries in mass. I, I'm sure you guys have dealt with it, too. Do you have any thoughts on that, on, on employees who, who decide not to be vaccinated, uh, whether or not they should, uh, should be able to come back and, and serve customers and, and things like that? Should this be a concern for us? You know, I think that's a wonderful question. I think that in the end, you know, we live in the United States and you have the free choice of, uh, for the most part, uh, for what goes in your body. I think that um, I would say at this point, the the advantages, as I said before, of the vaccine are, are fairly irrefutable. Um, and I, and I think that, uh, that, that most people are, are starting to recognize that that there aren't significant downsides to getting the vaccine. So I think at the very beginning, the, some people had some suspicions and they were thinking, well, you know, maybe let's let other people get vaccinated. Let's let them be the guinea pigs and see if anything uh, untoward happens in those cases. And and I think we can pretty definitively say we vaccinated millions of people in this country that, that there has not been significant episodes of uh, adverse reactions or allergic reactions. I mean, not, not in big numbers anyway. Very, 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 very tiny numbers. And the side effects are relatively mild and short lasting, usually anywhere from one to two, maybe three days. Um, and and people generally uh, overwhelmingly have tolerated the vaccine well. And there, and there have been no long-term side effects that anyone has really been able to demonstrate that are significant. And any little things that come up like this Johnson & Johnson blood clot issue, uh, you know, the, the brakes are pumped and it's looked into uh, very in-depth, in even though, again, I don't think that it's the numbers of those clots that we're seeing are any different than what we see in the usual population. So I, I think that people in general are starting to understand not only the value of the vaccine, but the safety of it. And when it comes to the workplace, you know, uh, I'm not a labor law person. I don't know every workplace, but uh, I, I don't. I think it's it would be a challenge to mandate it in the workplace. Sure. Uh, but I think that when you First off, you, everyone's going to likely be wearing a mask anyway, uh, but the benefits are if you're vaccinated and you go into the break room and if everybody in work is vaccinated, the CDC has said, hey, if, if, if everyone in your little group uh, is vaccinated, you don't have to wear your mask. You don't have to worry about social distancing. This is a new recommendation. So if everybody in your workplace and your little work sphere is vaccinated, that really, I think, makes things easier for everybody. So I think there might be 
some some pressure from that side potentially maybe to get vaccinated. But again, uh, I I can only sit here from this side of the table and recommend to people that they that they get the vaccination uh, for the greater good not only of the community but of themselves. And I think that spills over into the workplace. But again, it's any it's everyone's individual decision. So uh, you know, uh, pe- some people have may have to work through that uh, to get to the solution that they want. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The way I look at it is I get my vaccine to protect me. I'm wearing my mask to protect Engineer Patty, who hasn't had a chance to get his yet. As soon as he gets his, then we'll both rip the masks off. It'll be viva la fiesta. <laughs> All righty. So you guys have, have grown uh, quite a bit lately uh, there, your, your campus at Henry Mayo. It continues to grow in order to meet the needs of the community. You're, you're going to continue to expand your services and add facilities for an additional 92 new patient beds. As part of this expansion, a group called Mental Assistance for Teens Today, or MAT for short, no relation, has called on the hospital officials to include a teen inpatient mental health center. I know this isn't your decision, Dr. Dr. Lawrence, one way or the other, but can you explain a little bit about what exactly it is that they're asking for and why this is something that would benefit our community? Yeah. So, um, uh, I, again, yeah, I'm not, uh, I, I'm not the one who makes these decisions obviously, but, but I, I can talk about it a little bit. I mean, the, the bottom line, I think that everyone that your listeners should know is that, um, we talked a little bit about mental health in the beginning of this, uh, this conversation, but adolescent mental health is, is a big issue in terms of access to care. Now, I'm talking as a baseline, it's an issue with access to care. Uh, so if you look at 2019, before COVID, mm-hmm. getting kids, teenagers and, and younger kids, access to get uh, psychiatric therapy, to see a psychiatrist, uh, and maybe to get on medication if they were to need it, those kinds of things, to get an appointment at one of these places uh, to get care, it was, was, was a challenge. But then if you look at actually if you were so unwell from a psychiatric standpoint that you needed to be in an inpatient facility or a facility where, where you can have, you know, focused treatment and start medications, those beds uh, at these adolescent psychiatric facilities are so hard to come by that, that we oftentimes in, in emergency departments across Los Angeles, patients who are on a involuntary hold, for example, as they were maybe a danger to themselves, sometimes they can't get a bed at a psychiatric, an adolescent psychiatric facility for up to uh, 24, 48, sometimes 72 hours, which is the actual length of the involuntary hold. Mm-hmm. So it is, uh, as, as an emergency medicine provider and as a director of an emergency department, uh, and as a human, it's, it's, it's very upsetting to see a child in any emergency department have to sit in a bed, not really getting the care that they need uh, until they can get to that psychiatric facility. Now, here at Henry Mayo, we have we've done we've gone to great lengths to remedy that. We have a, a telepsychiatry program where we can have a psychiatrist come in and see these patients and actually provide that therapy and maybe get them started on medications if they need it, or not get them started if they don't need medications. So we're able to apply those resources in the emergency department, but it doesn't take away from the fact that there really are not enough inpatient beds. This is a very underserved uh, area of our healthcare system. Uh, and if you remember the Ventura fires that occurred maybe like two and a half, three years ago, yeah. uh, there was a facility uh, in Ventura that actually had an adolescent inpatient facility and it burned down. So we even lost of those beds. So, you know, it's not uncommon for us to have to send kids to, to uh, up to, to Bakersfield in Kern County to get a bed. It's really in any port, what I tell parents, it's in any port in a storm situation because these beds are so hard to come by. So right. a lot of talking, but to answer your question, uh, the hospital, I'm certain, recognizes the need because we're. This is, you know, part of what we do, um, and uh, and uh, there's no question about the value of providing that care. The question, sort of, I, I think, is is more along the lines of um, how how to operationalize that, whether or not that's something that could be sustainable. Uh, those are all questions for the hospital. But I I, I know from uh, I know that there 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 is uh, an over overwhelming sense of of support 
generally within LA County to increase the number of beds for inpatient adolescent psychiatric patients. The question is, is that something that in the end we would be able to do at Henry Mayo? Would we be able to actually operationalize that uh, from from a logistic standpoint, from a physical plant standpoint, from a regulatory standpoint? There are many hoops to jump through. Obviously, as you know, we do have our, our behavioral health unit here at Henry Mayo, uh, but again, it does not it does not take care of patients under the age of 18, as is standard with most behavioral health units. Yeah, and and it's something that we've certainly seen the seen the need for in our community over the last couple of years. And with with COVID, it, it's only exacerbated the the issue. So we'll we'll see how that shakes out with the folks that uh, that do get to make those decisions, Dr. Lawrence. Now, Henry Mayo has been such a blessing in our community for a, a really long time. Um, some of our listeners may uh, may want to reach out. We talked about how we can support the staff. Uh, others may want to support the hospital in general. If, if if listeners would like to donate or otherwise support the hospital, how can they do that, Dr. Lawrence? That is an awesome question because, as we were talking about before, this is a this is a community supported hospital, and actually uh, donations, not only the food don- donations that we were talking about before, but monetary donations or other donations to help uh, with you know, I mean, gosh, you could even donate property. Um, there there are there are multiple ways to donate, uh, and those kind of donations are the type of things that keep our hospital afloat and help fund new things like new operating rooms that we'd like to build, um, th- this n- new tower the potentially or new, that you were speaking about. Any of these projects require funding and the, the and, and the community support is integral to that. Uh, and th- this this donation, or you can look into donating if you go to henrymayogiving.com. Henrymayogiving.com will give you access to our foundation, our Henry Mayo Newhall Hospital Foundation. And even more timely, we are uh, our annual. We have an annual golf tournament uh, called the uh, Frontier Toyota. Henry Mayo Newhall Drive Safe Golf Tournament. And this tournament occurs in, in May every year. Uh, it didn't happen last year because of COVID. And this year, it's more of a day of golf, not really a tournament because of the COVID restrictions. We're calling it a hybrid uh, tournament. And in and the Frontier Toyota, Joe Queso at Frontier Toyota, has been the most amazing supporter of our hospital. We're so thankful for him. He actually donated a hybrid car, um, I believe it's a hybrid Toyota Corolla, but don't don't count me in. Uh, don't hold me to the fire on that. But we are auctioning. Actually, not auctioning. Raffling off of that car. So it at at um, at our website, you can find more information about this. But for one hundred dollars, the tickets are a hundred dollars. We're only selling a thousand tickets. Uh, you can you can have the opportunity to win a brand new car, which is really something actually that that I don't think we've done before, and is is an amazing opportunity for for our community to not only win something great, but also take part in supporting our uh, emergency services. This tournament actually specifically supports our emergency services, obviously very close to my heart as the director of the emergency department and uh, and as a co-chair of the golf tournament. Um, so uh, definitely look to henrymayogiving.com to help help put your your make make a difference uh, with yourself with your giving uh, to help our hospital be successful and provide the best care we can to our community and that is our goal actually is to increase our services and always always increase our customer service experience and continue to improve and become a center of excellence uh, that we know we we can be in, and and actually that we are so uh, so your your donations make a huge difference so we're very thankful for our community members for that what a great opportunity what a great community we live in you can Donate $100 to the hospital. You have a chance to win a brand new car donated by Frontier Toyota. That is that is fantastic. Uh, so go ahead and go to that website. Uh, like you said, henrymayogiving.com, and you make a donation, buy a, buy a raffle ticket, hopefully win that, uh, that brand new Toyota. All right. It, it is Proud Papa time. We, we talked about this a little bit last year, but it deserves to be talked about more often. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about the Stop the Bleed kits and and – and how your daughters were were involved in that? Yeah, it is a proud pop up moment, I guess. Uh, yeah, the, with uh, Keep the Pressure, their, their company is called Keep the Pressure, uh, and my ta- my two daughters have a nonprofit corporation uh, where they donated bleed kits to uh, many of the classrooms in the Santa Cruz Valley. Uh, obviously, I think we probably talked about before, but these kits were used during the Saugus tragedy. Uh, sadly, um, uh, thankful that our kits were there, but obviously we wished that we wished that nothing like that would ever happen, uh, and we we hope and pray that nothing like that ever happens again. 
Uh, but the key to this is preparedness. So uh, at per, per, you know, as usual, my daughters have been continuing to, their mission to try to get kids uh, out into the community, uh, places of business, um, you know, you, you, the places of worship, um, obviously classrooms, uh, any of these places that, that are that are higher higher risk for any type of um, either natural disaster. Obviously, we always kind of in the back of our mind think of some sort of an active shooter situation. And, and you know, as sad as it is, I think anyone who watches the news, you see that. It's something that has become a part of our reality, and I don't know there's many ways uh, to sort of uh, avoid the situation proactively, although obviously um, many things are being done in conjunction. But one thing you can always do is be prepared. And so at keepthepressure.com, uh, you can actually pick up a, a bleed kit for your car or your house or your place of business. Uh, we have uh, three different types of kits um, based on what you'd like inside the kit, uh, and my daughters run run that nonprofit. They're trying to get their kits. Their, their kits have been going out to schools nationally and we're working on trying to get them into South Africa uh, nationally, which is a place that uh, has high risk as well, uh, internationally, excuse me. And um, and we're also trying to work on getting them into government buildings because as we've seen recently, that, that is also a very high risk area. So we're trying to work with our local government agencies uh, to, to get these, these kits in there. Um, and again, uh, you can get these kits at keepthepressure.com, but really with my daughters, uh, they don't make any money off of these kits. They're trying to just get them out there. So we, they don't really care if you use our kit or some other kit, uh, just to have that awareness and education, uh, which you can get some of that education from their website. Yeah, something that you you hope you'll never need, but if you do, you, you'll be darn glad that you have it. All right, uh, now I, I'm, I'm going to give you an out on this one if you if you want. I've got one last question, and if you want to no comment me, that's, that's totally fine, but uh, I figured as long as I've got the director of emergency care at Henry Mayo on the phone, I would ask, TV shows have made millions of dollars off of wacky things that go on in the ER. I mean, it saved Saturday Night Live a few years back. Can you can you share a little bit? What's the craziest or weirdest thing you've ever seen come into the ER? You know, obviously for patient privacy stuff, I can't reference anything specifically, <laughs> but I can tell you that I have almost seen everything. Now, I did my uh, residency training at LA County USC uh, Medical Center, which is down in uh, East, L East Los Angeles, and uh, probably one of the strongest emergency medicine residencies in the country, mostly because of the experience there. Uh, and, you know, that we um, we saw tons of trauma. In fact, our, um, our military, our Navy, uh, they would bring their forward response services teams to to our emergency department to get experience, which is like kind of like their MASH unit, if you used to watch the show MASH. Yeah. And, and, and the reasoning behind that is it's so close to a war zone. It's about as close as you can get without being in the war zone. And then those teams would then deploy out to the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So um, truly, from a trauma standpoint, uh, I've seen everything. And from an otherwise standpoint, I've seen everything, things in, <laughs> things in, uh, in holes where they shouldn't be, uh, you know, a thing, people, you know, accidents. Uh, obviously, uh, we still are, we're a trauma center here at Henry Mayo. We're a stroke center. Uh, we're a heart attack center. We are an emergency department approved for pediatrics. So again, we, we, uh, we really specialize in, in taking care of heart attacks and strokes and trauma. Uh, and and you know we get recognition for this the this specialization that we're able to provide our community, um, but yeah you know the bottom line with emergency medicine is that when I'm sitting here in the emergency department like I am today, anything can and oftentimes will walk through that door, and that's what's special about it, and that's what keeps it fresh and real. And uh, one of the things that I cherish, and actually why I chose emergency medicine, uh, actually I, I chose emergency medicine because when I was a kid I was at like pyramid and unfortunately there was a horrible accident and uh, a child died and I wasn't able to do anything to help in that situation and I said to myself I never want to be in anywhere in this world where I can't if I can't help somebody if they need it so emergency medicine to me made sense because I'd be able to know how to do everything in that emergency situation and that's and that's that's how our emergency physicians are here and and anything can walk through the door and that's that's the crazy part about it and if if you're somebody who has something crazy happen to you don't think we haven't seen it before you know some people think you know oh I'm so embarrassed to be here for this because you know blah 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 and it's like you know listen this is our job this is what we're, we're, we we came into this field to help people in their time of need, whatever that might be. We make no judgments. We, we, uh, you know, we're, we're simply here as 
a as a physician healthcare provider to to provide you the best care you can uh, in in your emergency. And you know that's that's kind of what makes our job great, actually. <laughs> what a great guy! Gosh, Dr. Lawrence, you're always so gracious, and we appreciate everything that you and the entire team at Henry Mayo do every day. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. You take care, sir. Thank you, and thank you for having me, and thank you for getting the word out to the community. I really appreciate it. It is our pleasure. When we come back, we'll take a look at what's going on around the Valley, as well as some fun minor holidays that we're celebrating today. So stick around. This is SCVI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley, and you're listening to your hometown station, KHTS. KHTS strives to give the Santa Clarita Valley all the information they need. And when our computers aren't working the way they should, we call Resurgence, your true source for IT. Resurgence provides outstanding customer service while also providing the highest technical ability. They strive to do what's best to improve and protect your business. For more information on Resurgence, call 349-4114 or visit resurgenceit.com. Why did Mercedes-Benz of Valencia win the Dealer of Excellence Award in 2019? Because we strive to provide the most outstanding sales experience. Mercedes-Benz of Valencia COO Chris Paz. We know you have high expectations. Our stellar team will meet and exceed your expectations. That's why we were named Mercedes Best of the Best, placing us in the top 10% of all Mercedes dealers nationwide. Find out how you can lease a new Mercedes for unbelievably low monthly payments. Details at mbzvalencia.com. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of my pillow, here to tell you about my Giza Dream bed sheets. I made sure that they would be everything you'd ever want in a sheet set. I started with the world's finest cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region where the Sahara Desert, the Nile River, and the Mediterranean Sea all meet. The long staple cotton makes my Giza Dream sheets ultra soft and durable. They come with extra wide pillowcases to fit over any pillow and extra deep pockets to fit over any mattress. Not only that, they come with my 60 day money back guarantee and a 10 year warranty. And now you can get the best sheets ever for the best price ever. When you buy one of my Giza Dream bed sheet sets, you'll get another one absolutely free. I personally guarantee that they'll be the most comfortable sheets you'll ever own. Go to MyPillow.com and use the promo code KHTS or call 800-973-3927 and use the promo code KHTS. That's 800-973-3927 or go to MyPillow.com and use the promo code KHTS. Thank you for supporting Duncan during the COVID-19 pandemic. Duncan is now hiring team members, shift leaders, assistant and store managers in Van Nuys, Burbank, Atwater Village and Glendale Galleria. Duncan offers competitive pay, career growth, benefits, flexible hours, team member discounts, and a fun work environment. Apply at DunkinDonuts.com and search careers. Try the new avocado toast or grilled cheese sandwich. All Duncan restaurants are independently owned and operated by individual franchises. No, oh, can you believe it? My owner just dumped me in front of the bins in this trash enclosure. Now I'm taking up space and blocking the bins from being serviced. Can someone let him know that Santa Clarita's waste haulers offer free large item pickup or drop off? Bulky items like me can be dropped off at their local facility for free, or you can schedule a pickup. GreenSantaClarita.com has the instructions. It's easy. Don't dump. It's better for your neighborhood and keeps me off the streets. If you've ever dreamed of having a space to call your own, now you can turn that dream into a reality with the grand opening of Ulrich Barnes in Santa Clarita. Saturday, April 24th from 10 to 4. Join KHTS as we help celebrate the newest location of Ulrich Barnes of California. Delicious food, tons of great raffle prizes, and lots of family fun. Get a quote and you're instantly eligible to win a 58-inch Samsung 4K TV. Tour a variety of structures guaranteed to fit your needs and your budget. Whether you want a beautiful she shed, a home gym, a man cave, or just some extra storage space, Ulrich has you covered. Located on Delone Street off the 14 Freeway at Sand Canyon. Go to ulrichofcalifornia.com for more information. That's U-L-R-I-C-H of California.com. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, and you are listening to SCVI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley. 
Last week, Santa Clarita resident Michelle Dorsey was brutally killed in, in her home here in Saugus. And tragically, she leaves behind three beautiful boys, ages 9, 11, and 13. Those boys are being adopted by Michelle's sister, Castaic resident Jessica Jordan, who has three very young children of her own. KHTS and the Santa Clarita Coalition are assisting the family by raising money to purchase a Suburban, a vehicle large enough to, for Jessica to transport her six children to and from school and other activities. And you can assist this effort by visiting SantaClaritaCoalition.org. That is SantaClaritaCoalition.org. And as I mentioned, we are celebrating a couple of minor holidays today. But for me, you all know, every holiday is a major holiday. I love celebrating the major ones, the minor ones, and we're celebrating some fun ones today. Patty, did you realize that it is National Cherry Cheesecake Day? Is it really? Love me some cherry Ooh. cheesecake. It is also National Lost Dogs Awareness Day. Aww. So uh, be aware, there are some lost dogs out there. Aww. <laughs> Sniff. Um, it, it's also National Picnic Day. So, uh, you know, maybe a, a picnic dinner uh, as the sun sets might be a good idea. You know, we've all been inside for the last year or so, so maybe get outside with the family and have a, a, a picnic dinner. Today is National Take a Chance Day. You know, <laughs> here in America, we value our risk takers, whether it's in, in, in business or uh, on a bicycle at the bike park or, you know, take a chance. Oftentimes in this world, we regret the things that we didn't do, not the things that we did do. So take a chance. It's funny. Um, we're, we're not really certain when William Shakespeare was born. We're not really certain the exact date. They believe that today is his birthday. But uh, today has been declared National Talk Like Shakespeare. Uh, talk Like Shakespeare Day. So you can feel free to talk like William Shakespeare wrote, if thou dost wish. <laughs> or... If that's really annoying, then, then maybe you can observe this last national day. It is the National Day of Silence. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> I'm going to have trouble you, with that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you and me both, brother. So, so, so there it is. Tonight, like I said, maybe you can take a chance, grab some cherry cheesecake for a picnic with your family, and you can all stay silent like Shakespeare. So, uh, yeah, get out there. Celebrate those holidays. At least that cherry cheesecake sounds like, like a lot of fun. Well, we will be back after this with Wendy Ruiz from the Preschool Little Eye Leaders. I am Matt Watson, and you are listening to SCBI and I Lead Schools, Eye on the Valley, on your hometown station, KHTS. cryotherapy is open as always they continue to clean and sanitize all equipment social distancing will be enforced and hand sanitizer will be provided throughout the facility temperature checks will be done daily on each employee and masks will be provided if forgotten they have amazing welcome back specials including the 99 dollars performance package which includes a cryo session pulsed electromagnetic field therapy which boosts recovery of damaged cells the aromatherapy oxygen bar, Nucom, and infrared sauna. There's also a beauty package with a cryofacial, infrared sauna, and more. And don't forget their extensive selection of health and wellness products, including CBD. Men Cryotherapy is open Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. For more information, go to MEND, M-E-N-D, cryotherapy.com mend cryotherapy on newhall ranch road in the gateway shopping center experience frontier toyota's all new hot and exciting toyota lineup serving the santa clarita valley for over 30 years frontier toyota the camry corolla and prius kings their tops in tacoma and tundra trucks frontier toyota the new way of car buying Shop from home at FrontierToyota.com or visit their showroom at Valencia and Creekside. Discover a whole new car buying experience with your friends at Frontier Toyota. 
no contract pest control. Did you hear that? Yes, Unipest has no contract, low impact, affordable and environmentally and family friendly pest control options with orange oil or other family friendly products. Whether it's ants, spiders, gophers, termites or bed bugs, Unipest Termite and Pest Control has an effective, eco-friendly option for you. Call Unipest today for a free orange oil inspection at 661-BUG-7575 or visit unipest.com. drive through Taste of the Town coming Sunday, May 2nd from noon to 4 at Child and Family Center. Each ticket offers a choice of gift cards to the 22 participating restaurants. Come and support your favorite eatery or choose a place that you've been meaning to try. Guests receive a deluxe gift bag, enjoy live music, an online auction, a photo op, and more. Proceeds benefit the Child and Family Center. Enjoy a taste of the town like no other before. Details at tasteofthetown.com. Accidents happen, but rest assured Patterson's Collision Center is here to help. Patterson's is a family-owned and operated collision repair facility providing the Santa Clarita Valley with premium collision repairs. Patterson's prides itself on being the only California certified green repair shop in all of Santa Clarita. They are insurance claim specialists and even offer payment plans for your deductible. For personalized, friendly service, visit PattersonsCollisionCenter.com or call 294-1011 and let Patterson's Collision Center help ease your worries today. KHTS AM 1220 and 98.1 FM Santa Clarita. It's 9 o'clock. Time for national news on KHTS. More talks on climate change. I'm Rich Dennison, Fox News. President Biden is wrapping up his climate summit with 40 other world leaders. President Biden is focusing on how the U.S. will keep its commitment to reduce carbon emissions by at least 50 percent by 2030 on day two of his summit with world leaders. The president says getting off fossil fuels will create new green jobs. The Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell believes the administration's plans will imperil American workers. Hurting our coal and natural gas industries and putting good paying American jobs into the shredder. Among the other speakers today, Climate Envoy John Kerry and Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Fox's Rachel Sutherland. A massive search continues in the Bali Sea for an Indonesian submarine that disappeared on Wednesday. Officials say the sub, carrying a crew of 53, would be rapidly running out of oxygen if water pressure hasn't already crushed its hull. American reconnaissance aircraft have reportedly joined in on that search. Medical experts are discussing Johnson & Johnson's coronavirus vaccine. The CDC's advisory panel for immunization practices will further discuss the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and any new data that might have been collected regarding cases of blood clots or any other conditions developed by patients who received that vaccine. The panel could then vote to recommend a course of action, either lifting the pause, prolonging it, or advise that people with certain medical histories not take it, or they could advise more data is needed. The meeting is scheduled to go on for six hours. Fox's Evan Brown, former Olympic decathlon athlete, and television reality star Caitlyn Jenner is making a run for the governor's office in California. Jenner, a Republican, is filing paperwork to enter the election and tweeting today that Sacramento needs an honest leader with a clear vision. She's also criticizing the state's high taxes and coronavirus restrictions. America is listening to Fox News. Saturday, April 24th is National Prescription Drug Take-Back Day. Help keep prescription opioids out of the wrong hands and reduce the risk of diversion, misuse, and abuse. When your opioid medicine expires or you no longer need it, please dispose of leftover medicines at a drop-off location as quickly as possible. For more information or to locate the Take Back Day location closest to you, go to DEATakeBack.com. This message is paid for by Purdue Pharma. What do you get when you talk to a Dell Technologies advisor? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You get someone who understands there's an art to listening. Mm-hmm. Sure. Who's able to hear more than what's being said and can provide tailored mm-hmm. small business solutions that make you feel okay. truly heard. I understand. Let's get started. For advice on everything from laptops to the cloud and solutions powered by Intel V Pro platform, call an advisor today at 877 Ask Dell. SpaceX has launched its third crew in under a year for NASA. 
A Falcon rocket carrying four astronauts blasted into orbit early this morning from Florida to dock with the International Space Station tomorrow. Five years to the day after a family of eight was killed in Ohio, their killer pleads guilty. Early in the morning of April 22, 2016, eight members of the Roden family were found shot to death at four different homes in Pike County, Ohio, about 75 miles south of Columbus. Thursday, 28-year-old Jake Wagner pled guilty to each of the killings, admitting the motive was a long-running custody battle over the three-year-old daughter he had shared with 19-year-old Hannah wrote. She, her parents, two siblings, an uncle, a cousin, and her brother's fiancé had all been shot in the head. In exchange for his guilty pleas and an agreement to testify against his parents and his brother for their roles in the killings, Wagner will be spared the death penalty. Jack Callahan, Fox News. Millions of Americans are still waiting for their tax refund. The IRS says due to the pandemic, it's taking them longer to process documents mailed to them, like paper tax returns and return-related correspondence. And new credits created because of the pandemic have made things complicated, like the recovery rebate credit. You can find out the status of your refund by doing a search on Where's My Refund IRS? An IRS page will pop up telling you they're experiencing delays and do not file a second tax return or call the IRS. Then plug in your social security number and other details to get a refund update. Jill Nato, Fox News. An effort to legalize recreational use of marijuana in Florida has hit a roadblock. The state Supreme Court ruling a ballot initiative for a proposed constitutional amendment is misleading since it does not say that use and possession of recreational marijuana remains a federal crime. Supporters of the initiative will now have to restart their efforts. I'm Rich Dennison and this is Fox News. I'm Stuart Varney and this is the Fox Business Report. Both manufacturing and the service sectors of the economy are showing strong signs of improvement this month. IHS Market is reporting record readings for both in April, the highest in 14 years. The service sector includes everything from hair salons to restaurants. And new home sales rose last month, up nearly 21%. Innovio shares are plunging, though, after the U.S. government decided to pull funding for trials of its experimental COVID-19 vaccine, the recent broad availability of other vaccines. United Airlines is adding more than 480 daily flights to its summer schedule in the U.S. United is betting that summer travel demand will pick up as more people receive COVID-19 vaccines. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Ginny Coselda. Invested in you. Finally, spring has arrived and so have all new Untucket styles. Check out our new wrinkle-free shirts that every guy needs as the weather warms up. And don't forget our famous polos, the official shirts of spring. Untucket shirts are designed to be worn untucked and will look great as we get back to the things we've been missing, like dinner with friends, reuniting with family, going on vacations, and yes, even heading back to the office. Untucket shirts designed to be worn untucked. Use code TAKE20 for 20% off your first purchase at Untucket. Com. Thanks for listening to KHTS AM 1220, Canyon Country, California, K260CO 98.1 FM, Santa Clarita, California. Are you looking for educational flexibility and choice? Look no further than your front door. iLead Exploration's independent study program is passionate about personalized learning. Our mission is to inspire learners to become creative problem solvers, compassionate leaders, conscientious collaborators, and responsible citizens who develop a lifelong love of learning. Our families partner with a credentialed teacher to customize each child's educational path. Families access community partners to choose a variety of in-person, online, and at-home options to create an optimal learning Learning environment for each learner. Our program also values community, and through a variety of field studies, service projects, park days, and family gatherings, we provide many opportunities to foster friendships. Because there are currently in-person limitations due to COVID, we are offering activities online through webinars and virtual field trips. iLead Exploration is a tuition-free, independent study charter school program serving grades TK through 12 in Los Angeles, Orange, Kern, San Bernardino, and Ventura counties. To learn more about our program, visit iLeadExploration.org. iLead Schools, free to think inspired to lead. Once heart attack symptoms begin, delaying treatment increases the risk of heart damage, disability, and even death. Time is critical. 
Leading the Valley with the most advanced digital technology and treatment times that beat national best practice goals, Providence offers emergency coronary angioplasty and stenting performed by highly trained board certified cardiologists. For more information, call 1-888-HEALING. The road to healing leads to Providence. Bring your life. We'll help you make the most of it. Introducing Five Point Valencia, a familiar place, and yet wonderfully different, with a fresh mix of homes, schools, parks, trails, and open space. All tuned to the way people want to live today. Learn more at valencia.com. Hey there, it's Tori with your hometown station weather. A mix of sun and clouds today with highs in the upper 60s, low 70s, overnight lows in the upper 40s, low 50s. For anything and everything Santa Clarita Valley related, go to hometownstation.com. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. The following is sponsored programming and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of KHTS or its ownership. Welcome back. You are listening to, <laughs> what are we listening to, Patty? We're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 on the AM side. I am your host, Matt Watson, and you're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools, Eye on the Valley. We are now joined by Wendy Ruiz, the program director at Little I Leaders. That is I Lead's preschool program here in Castaic. Wendy was previously the Infant and Toddler Director at College of the Canyon Center for Early Childhood Education and an adjunct instructor for the ECE department. She's worked with children and families for over 20 years in both the classroom setting as well as in administration. Wendy sits on the board of the Southern California Valley Association for the Education of Young Children as the WYOC co-chair. She is also a certified trainer in PITC, that is the Programs for Infants, Toddlers, and Caregivers. Wendy received her Bachelor's in Child Development from Cal State Northridge, Go Matadors, and her Master's in Child Development and Child Life from the University of Laverne, and is a Director Mentor for the California Mentor Program. And in 2018, she was the recipient of SCVI's Family Founders Vision Award. Wendy, welcome back to Eye on the Valley. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you, and it's 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 good to have you on the show. It's good to have you as part of our our, our school and greater community. You do amazing things for our littles and for their parents. So, give us a little bit of your background for those that don't know, Wendy. You uh, you have been a part of the Eilid family for for quite a while, both you and your family. Can you can you talk a little bit about your your history with the founding of SCVI and and, and your journey with us? Sure, yeah. We've been with SCBI since their opening days, uh, since their pre-conception of Amber's thoughts of having uh, a school that supported children's learning and um, through through hands-on learning um, from the youngest age all the way through 12th grade, and that was her vision, and I was so blessed to be a part of that vision from the very beginning. So, um, I now have a child who started there when he was in kindergarten, and now he's in 10th grade. Uh, and it's just been a wonderful journey the whole the whole time, seeing it start from the beginning until to how it's expanded since then. It's been amazing. Yeah, definitely. And your involvement, as you said, uh, you were kind of pivotal in uh, in helping develop that vision, right? Because after her kids attended your preschool, our founder, Amber Golden, became a, a bit disillusioned with district elementary schools and and sought to open a school similar to to your model there at, at college of this the, the canyons so so can i ask what was it that she was so attracted to about your program that that you actually kind of guided and, and helped her roll into scvi sure I, I was actually her daughter's first preschool teacher uh and so we built a relationship that way and it was amazing to 
she fell in love with our philosophy of play-based, hands-on learning, natural learning, allowing children to be children and develop as they're naturally supposed to develop. And she also valued the relationships that we built over as a between a parent and a um, and a teacher, and how that it doesn't have to be this like. I'm the teacher, you're the parent, and I have, you know, all the knowledge, but it, instead okay. it was a partnership, and she really valued that partnership and saw that there could be so much more, and she didn't, she was nervous to leave our school, and then where would she go next and still get mm-hmm. those same experiences for her children and those same relationships, where we truly valued the child and the family together as a unit, and so then she branched into this, into SCVI, which turned into ILE. Yeah, and, and the vision is really important, right, where where we value that, that natural learning philosophy because uh, for our listeners who, who maybe aren't educators, if you think about whether it's your child's experience, your own experience, um, oftentimes we see what happens. Kids are so excited to go to school when they're in kindergarten or when they're in preschool, right? They're, they're super excited. They've got their backpack that's way too big for their little bodies, and, and they're <laughs> running off to school. But then somewhere along the line, whether it's – third grade, fourth grade, eighth grade, 10th grade, uh, they're not as excited to get up and go to school anymore. And, and they, they start to, to hate going to school and, and they, they, they apply that negative feeling towards learning itself. But it doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to make education such a negative experience. It can be a, a fun, positive experience. That's what it's supposed to be. And, and so that's kind of a Kind of the idea that, that we build, and you know, it's funny when Wendy we we talk about it all the time, but it is really heartwarming. Oftentimes, when when we do see tears on our campus, is is not the first day of school; it's the last day of school when mm-hmm. uh, when kids are gonna be off campus for for a couple of months, and and you've played a huge role in, in developing that that culture and 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 the style of learning that goes on at SCVI, and now at our schools. Uh, 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 all over the place throughout uh, the I lead nation, as we call it. Now, you weren't just an inspiration, but you also took an active role in leadership, right? You you joined. Uh, was it starting day one that you joined the school board at SCVI, or was it a little bit later that you came on? No, it wasn't, it wasn't day one. It was pretty day one. I, no, it wasn't day one. I did take an active role as a parent, though. I was. I helped run their the Lego program for right. a few years. I did their spirit wear and <laughs> just a few different things like to be a part of the campus community because it just felt so it was finally it finally found a campus where our a school where as parents we were felt welcomed and yeah. where we could be there and it wasn't like this niche or this I don't know, it was just it was a place where I wanted to be and I wanted to hang out. And so uh, I kind of took advantage of any opportunities that came my way. And then the board position came available as a parent representative, and it seemed like a good fit. And so I did do that for, I think, seven years. Yeah. I think I was uh, on the board, seven or eight years, something like that. Maybe yeah. A little bit, a little minute. <laughs> <laughs> a little minute. In fact, you enjoyed being around so much, you uh, you stopped doing it as a hobby and started doing it uh, for a living, when uh, when you opened up <laughs> Little Eye Leaders, our our preschool program, uh, right there adjacent to the SCVI campus. So, uh, talk to us a, a little bit about uh, the evolution of, of of that program. When did that idea come up to 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 kind of stretch down? I guess it would be uh, into the preschool, and 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 how did that uh, that evolve and come to be? So, Amber and I had and Don had many conversations about how having a preschool would just be a natural fit because mm-hmm. obviously the preschool philosophy fits blends in very well of with project-based learning and so it just made sense and we were just trying to find the right timing to to make it happen and if we could create a program where families could start at the youngest age and then gradually move into you know into naturally move into the SCVI program where it was just such a natural fit because they already believed in the philosophy and they were already it was already a program that they envisioned it was it was just a natural fit so 
we but the discussion had been going for probably 10 years i think uh from the beginning we had we had known that was something that would just make sense and it just took a while to you know <laughs> to get all our ducks in a row <laughs> it, it was a matter of timing you know it's interesting wendy last week we had um we had Nolan, the SCVI athletic director, on along with one of his athletes, Declan. And Declan talked about how he's been at SCVI from kindergarten. He's now in, I think he said he was a freshman. He's in ninth grade. And, and he's excited about going from kindergarten through, uh, through 12th grade on the same campus. But now we've got kids. It's going to take a few more years for them to get all the way through 12th grade. <laughs> but we've got kids that have enrolled in your preschool program at a year and a half, two years old that are now in SCVI's elementary program and, and eventually could could spend the first 15 years of their education right there on the same campus, right? Yeah, they can actually start at six weeks old. Yeah. So we can have them from their whole... We could have them 18 years. Infancy, infancy through adolescence. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an amazing experience, an opportunity that where we truly are going to going to have an, a deep understanding of each learner from mm -hmm. the get-go and then be able to see it to see them flourish and grow is is amazing yeah yeah it's a, it's a blessing to have on campus it, yeah you're right and you talk about the importance of relationships with families some of the relationships that are are developed at scvi and our other schools that start at little eye leaders are are, are beautiful i know you are as well but you know, I'm uh, uh, still close friends with kids that have gone through our program and are, are now in college. Some of them graduated from college that are in their 20s, and and those relationships remain strong. It's it's just such an important component of uh, of education, and really does foster, uh, you know, how far and how deep you can you can go with kids. So tell us a little bit more about your program, um, because Little Eye Leaders is is unique. It, it, it's different from most other preschool programs. What makes uh, your preschool and your child care center so unique? Sure. So our, our program starts from six weeks until 12 years old. Uh, so we are a play-based program. We believe in natural play learning. And so where we empower children to follow their interests, follow their passions, and everything is based off the child so that the children are our kind of our foundation, our vision, our, whenever we're making a decision, it's about the children first. And so we allow the children, we believe children learn by doing, by touching, by exploring. We support their curiosity and their sense of wonder and help, help them to just gain that passion and that early life long learning that they're going to take for forever you know, into whatever goal or passion they, they experience later. And, uh, and so our, our program is really just, again, it's based on the child. It's based on the learner. And it's, they, we play in the mud, we play in the water, <laughs> we uh, take things apart and not necessarily put them back together. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, it's really every classroom is different. Every ch child's experience is different. Uh, but they run into school every morning, happy to be there, and they don't want to leave at the end of the day. Yeah. So we know we've done something right. And I love, you're absolutely right. I love how you guys kind of kind of follow the, the curiosity of each individual child and what they're wondering about, what they're excited about. You guys just jump in and, and support. It's, it's an amazing approach, a, a terrific philosophy. And and no, it's it's not just a let the kids do whatever they want all day. It's it's supporting and feeding that natural curiosity because curiosity is the spark of, of learning and, and understanding. Now, Wendy, last year uh, when the pandemic really hit, everything uh, kind of shut down, but preschools were the first to, to be allowed to, to reopen, and you guys – uh, certainly uh, were able to get back up and, and, and running really quickly. But how did things change during the pandemic? So things definitely changed. We did close for about two months, and then uh, we reopened at the end of last May. And while things were different, so much still was able to stay the same, which was, which was nice. Uh, the things that were different, of course, is families 
have to check in at the front desk. They um, are not able to enter the actual building, like mm. to go back to the classroom. Uh, teachers are, are wearing masks. Our school-age children are wearing masks. Our, uh, we are disinfecting more, <laughs> even more than we were before. Um, just making different choices. Of course, taking temperatures of the children as they arrive, t- taking temperatures of the staff. Uh, the parents have to fill out a survey when they enter just to make sure that the children haven't been exposed or have any, uh, you know, any symptoms. We follow all the same guidelines from the CDC and public health department. So the same with like the travel ban. If, if any parents or staff traveled, we followed, followed those guidelines as well. So we're doing everything we can to keep all of the learners, staff, and the families safe. So that was our biggest change. I mean, of course, as childcare, we're always looking to keep everybody safe right but this added a new um new you know a new layer yeah because uh, safety means something different now yeah yeah our class sizes are were, are smaller so before we were allowed to have you know 20 24 children to a classroom now we have 10 oh, okay. uh 10 learners to a classroom that is slowly changing the guidelines are slowly starting to lift so we're looking to definitely start expanding our classrooms back to almost normal size over the next month or so going into summer. So we are looking um, forward to that and just, you know, just being aware of our surroundings and all, but we're still the same place. We're still allowing learners are still playing and exploring and having those same experiences and connections and relationships. And we're just so blessed that we've been able to provide a place so that parents could go back to work and have a safe space for their, for their children to go all day while they can, you know, get their commute in or whatever yeah. is requiring of them, whether they're working from home or not working from home, um, we're still able to provide those needs for parents. And that's been a huge, huge, we're just so grateful for that. Yeah, I was going to say, it is so important because a lot of uh, offices and different industries are reopening. And if families aren't able to, to count on child care or preschool, then then they're not able to go back to their offices. It, it really provides quite a conundrum for them. I'm glad to hear that you guys are, are moving in the direction of uh, uh, of being able to open more spots, right? I, I, obviously, yeah. we don't want to cram kids in. We, we value a smaller class size in the first of place. Um, but uh, so are you guys opening new spots if our listeners are listening and, and uh, would like to enroll their, uh, their little at, at, in your program? Is that something that you're going to have spots for soon? That's our hope. I mean, we, of course, like you said, we do value small group sizes and, and low ratios. That is one, another aspect of our program that we, is really important to us and valuable to us. So we will be adding more spots, but we won't be going over the top and cramming children in, as you <laughs> mentioned. We're going to keep, um, even when we do grow, we will be adding more teachers. So we'll have, still maintain that small ratio. Uh, we and we are looking to we have you know we just have parents calling every day and so we want to be okay. able to accommodate them and to meet the needs of learners as schools are starting to reopen elementary schools uh, other families are now starting to become more comfortable and and going back to work as well and so the need is definitely there and so we're trying to to meet that need whether it's infants toddlers preschool and our school age program has has grown as well since the schools have opened back up yeah so i want to meet needs. I want to talk about that. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. But uh, while we're while we're discussing, uh, you know, families that are that are interested, how can how can our listeners get more information or get on the wait list for one of those spots? So the best way is to go onto our website, which is littleeyeleaders dot org. They once they go on the website, there is a link that says um, more information or click like it, it's like an enrollment information info. They click on that and then it. They just fill in the information, and that gets sent directly to one of our directors, and they'll reach out to you. They'll contact you either through email or phone, whichever is best for you. We'll set up a virtual tour because right now that's what we're able to do is we'll do a virtual tour sure. and then get you all situated. But going online is the best way because that way we're able, your information is in our system. There is no fee to go on our wait list, though, so if you, if you go in and – and it sounds like a thing, something you want to reserve, you can mm-hmm. absolutely go on our wait list. And like I said, there's no fees, so no hurt, no harm to do it. Yeah, definitely. If they can call, of course, 661-383-0400. Uh, and it's just 
but I will tell you that online is probably the best way. Yeah. Just that, having that paper trail helps. And you can get tons of information from the website as well. And I would recommend that, that families go on the website. If there's anything that you can't find there, then go ahead and give them a call. But, yeah, definitely get your name on the wait list if you're interested. Wendy Ruiz is the program director of Little Eye Leaders Preschool. But uh, there's more to her program than just that. We'll talk about it when we get back. You're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley. I'm Matt Watson on your hometown station, KHTS. Celebrate the new year with the Canyon Theatre Guild's new spring online youth workshops. Express yourself from the comfort of your own home with super fun classes like improv, script writing, audition techniques, and two brand new shows specifically designed for online performances. No borders, no experience necessary, and no end to the fun. Call 661-799-2702 or visit us at canyontheater.org. Why did Mercedes-Benz of Valencia win the Dealer of Excellence Award in 2019? Because we strive to provide the most outstanding sales experience. Mercedes-Benz of Valencia COO Chris Paz. We know you have high expectations. Our stellar team will meet and exceed your expectations. That's why we were named Mercedes Best of the Best, placing us in the top 10% of all Mercedes dealers nationwide. Find out how you can lease a new Mercedes for unbelievably low monthly payments. Details at mbzvalencia.com. If you need help at home or at the office, call Made For You. Made For You is a locally owned, bonded, and licensed cleaning service with over 20 years of experience. All employees are vetted for your protection. No need to buy products or equipment. The Made For You staff comes complete with everything needed to make your home or office cleaner than ever. Hire Made For You one time, as needed, or an ongoing basis. No room is off limits. Laundry and ironing services are also available. Call Made For You for a free estimate. 255-2922. That's 255-2922. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI and I lead schools Eye on the Valley, and I am your host, Matt Watson. We're talking this morning with Wendy Ruiz, the program director of Little Eye Leaders Preschool in Castaic. And, and Wendy, we are technically in Castaic, but it's funny. I've, uh, I live in the same area that you do, and, and <laughs> sometimes when we think of Castaic, we think, oh, way up there. But it is not way up there, is it? We're, we're just like just barely in Castaic, right? Yes. It's just, yeah, it's not way up there at all. <laughs> it's like one. Well, I just hop on the freeway for one exit. <laughs> well, and yeah, and that's you don't even have to do that. We're we're literally no. right off of Newhall Ranch Road, just on the other side of the five freeway. And and so if you're thinking ah, Castaic, I don't know, it, it's it's like totally Valencia adjacent. It's just right there. It's yes, on the absolutely. west side of the valley. And and if you do have to take the freeway to get downtown for work or anything like that, boy, is it freeway convenient. So. Definitely. Now, Wendy, we, we talked about Little Eye Leaders, your preschool, but you mentioned that, that you serve children from six weeks to 12 years old. Uh, and, and no, we don't have 12-year-olds enrolled in the preschool, but you've got another program called I Create. Can you tell us about I Create? Sure. I Create is our before and after school program, and we also do summer programs. During the pandemic, it was a uh, a huge uh, support for families. Yeah. We were able to take those learners and do distance learning with them. So they would come, they would come to our campus. They could be there all day and we did their zooms with them and made sure they were all checked in and getting their work done. And then after their zooms were done, we provided experiences for them to get that energy out and to play and still be children and get outdoors <laughs> and, um, socialize again. And so it was um, wonderful to be able to provide those full day services for them. And then as schools opened back up, we just shifted and are now meeting their needs by the parents drop their children off in the morning. We walk their children over to the campus um, when class starts and then we pick them up after and bring them back and they can stay with us until the parents get off work and we close at six. So 
It, it, it's oh, funny. Yeah. It's it, it's the full wraparound service that that we don't see much anymore. And I remember, uh, it's funny. Some of my earliest re- m- memories were when I was in preschool and then went to first grade at, at, at the the local elementary school right across the street from my preschool, and they did the same thing. You know, they would uh, they would pick me up out after school and just walk me across the street and to to the daycare until uh, until my parents got off work. It's such a an amazing convenience. We talk about your ties to SCVI, and obviously it's it's the same parent organization. Um, but your programs, the I Create After School program, it's not only open to SCVI families, is it? It's is it open to the public? It is open to the public. We have some homeschool children that attend, and then we also have some from local elementary schools. We don't currently have transfer, transportation, so mm-hmm. parents do um, take care of that. But we do take children from, we have children from Castaic Elementary and a couple other elementary schools that uh, get dropped off. And we are open to, and especially during summer, we're definitely open to anybody. It's just mm-hmm. the convenience of having SCVI on campus, of course, works for sure the majority of our families, but it's not required to attend. So you mentioned an interesting idea that I never really thought of. You have some homeschool families enrolled in your after-school care program. Uh, That's something that a lot of homeschool families are looking for, right? An opportunity for a couple of hours a day for their kids to interact with other kids, to to play, and, you know, maybe uh, mom, dad, grandma, whoever's doing the education at home, uh, needs that break for for a couple of hours what a what a great what a great compliment to a homeschool program yeah some of our homeschoolers even come during the day and we support their learning that they send with them oh wow so they're able to do kind of a little a little bit of both uh so we really are open to whatever that families need to the best of our to the best of our abilities Our, our goal when we took on i create was to provide an after-school program that children actually wanted to go to but didn't have to go to just because their parents had to work. Right. And so we've worked really hard to make it a place where it is fun and engaging and they don't want to leave at the end of the day. Uh, and that's, um, that was really important to us when we when we did that. So we, we really work hard to create experiences. That it's not dittos and coloring sheets <laughs> that they're doing all day, but they're getting outdoors and they're playing basketball or they're going on walks or they're – um, playing in the mud or building castles out of <laughs> milk crates or whatever the case, but they're uh, actively engaged throughout their um, throughout their day. Yeah, very consistent with our philosophy. You know, the kids want to to be there. Now, um, yeah. so you're providing, and, and I know kids are getting back on campus um, somewhat full time, uh, five days a week in most cases at the elementary level, anyways. For the after-school care program, uh, are you guys back to your 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 previous system uh, where everything is kind of back to normal now? Pretty much, uh, we do have some flexibility. We have some learners who are still on Zoom, and so we have facilitators on campus to support those learners. We have our youngest, you know, our TK kindergarten who get out of school at. 12 15 you know so they we pick them up um and bring them over and there and some that are still some families who are choosing to not go back and so they're still choosing to zoom mm. so we have those learners as well so we do have a we've created a system where we can support pretty much almost every need at this point and then we have our learners who get off at 3 15 and so we pick them up as well and bring them back uh we make sure they get fed and mm. so they have their lunch they have their recess or playtime um and then we're now we're just getting ready and preparing for our summer camp well well, yeah so you mentioned the summer camp tell us a little bit more about that what's the program like yeah so you know that's a really good question because this will be our first (laughs) summer camp during covid yeah um and our intent our goal is to go back to normal with possibly field trips each week and as long as we can, you know, we're based off of our guidelines. Of course, a lot of water play. We will be open full days for our families. So um, our, our I create kids, children are, are what come six, seven to six. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have different wow. options. They could come Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Monday through Friday. Or parents could even do like a five-day pass where they just buy five days and they can use the five days how they choose. 
So maybe they just need a, you know, they know that they're going to need one here and one there. It's up right. to them. So we put, allow that flexibility. Um, but really, it's it's going to be so they're going to have games and we'll have themes each week and different ways for them to explore and have fun and really hoping to fit in some field trips. And if we can't do if we can't leave the campus for trips, then we'll find ways to bring those experiences in. Ah, well, that sounds great. Fantastic. I'm sure families are going to be so excited. I'm sure kids are going to be so excited about that program. So one more time, Wendy, if, if families are interested, whether it's in your, your preschool where you take kids from, from six weeks to uh, up to uh, pre-kinder or your after-school program where you take kids up until 12 years old or your summer program, how can families get a hold of you and get more information? Yeah, definitely go on our website on littleileaders.org that will have access to either our iCreate program or our preschool and infant program. There is an intent form or an interest form on there for you to fill out. It takes just a few seconds to fill it out. Our, you can also check out our philosophy on there. We have some photos and information about our program and our, our address and phone number are on there, but you can give us a call at 661 661- Three eight three zero four zero zero, and someone will absolutely help you out. Uh, and we can set up, like I mentioned, a virtual tour or give you information over the phone if that helps. Uh, and you just let us know our needs, and we tell you how we can meet them. Yeah, and your staff is so friendly and, and wonderful. Wendy, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. You've you've been terrific. I'm, I'm so excited to hear. I don't want to say getting back to normal, um, but uh, but I'm so glad to hear that you guys are are going to soon be able to continue continue to expand your program, go back to to receiving the same number of kids soon that uh, that you've always served. Because I know what a blessing Little Eye Leaders is in our community. Wendy, have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course, it's our pleasure. Bye. Now, most of you have heard uh, last week Santa Clarita resident Michelle Dorsey was, was brutally killed in her home. And tragically, she leaves behind three beautiful boys, ages 9, 11, and 13. They're being adopted by Michelle's sister, Castaic resident Jessica Jordan, who has three very young children of her own. KHTS and the Santa Clarita Coalition are assisting the family by raising money to purchase a Suburban, a vehicle large enough for Jessica to transport her now six children to and from school and, and other activities. You can assist the family by visiting SantaClaritaCoalition.org. That is SantaClaritaCoalition.org. Thank you so much. You, you stick around, folks. We're going to have some fun. Big T is coming up next. This is SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson. We'll be right back on your hometown station, KHTS. When you look at your child, you see so much. A creative spirit that surprises you every day. A little leader growing to discover who they are, what they love, and how they can make the world better. At SCVI, we see those same amazing things. Our tuition-free TK-12 charter school provides boundless opportunities to think critically and imagine freely with a learning program customized just for your child. Today, that means empowering your child to bring strengths and passions to the distance learning environment. Our approach keeps your child and family in step while online, inspiring your learner to keep growing without missing a beat. At SCVI, your child will find even more ways to grow with projects and activities in STEAM, robotics, theater, music, and sports. With the only international baccalaureate program in Santa Clarita, SCVI produces graduates who excel at top universities and in life. For enrollment information or to learn more about our distance learning program, visit iLeadSantaClarita.org. iLead Schools, free to think, inspired to lead. Loss of hearing can affect the quality of life. Santa Clarita Hearing Center can help. They specialize in both preventative hearing loss and corrective measures, including diagnostic tests, new technology hearing aids, cochlear implants, hearing protection, and tinnitus treatment. They can adjust your current hearing aids or fit you for new ones. Santa Clarita Hearing Center also offers sleep molds, swim molds, and musician monitors. Book an appointment today. Log on to SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. Located on McBean Parkway next to the hospital. That's SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. Thank you for supporting Duncan during the COVID-19 pandemic. Duncan in Canyon Country and on Bouquet Canyon is now hiring team members, shift leaders, and assistant managers. Duncan offers competitive pay, career growth, 
benefits, flexible hours, team member discounts, and a fun work environment. Apply at DunkinDonuts.com and search careers. Make sure to try the new avocado toast or grilled cheese sandwich. All Dunkin' restaurants are independently owned and operated by individual franchises. The Santa Clarita Valley runs on Dunkin'. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 on the AM side. This is SCVI and I lead school's Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson, and I am joined now by Engineer Andrew. What's up, Andrew? How's it going? How's it going? Doing well. Doing well. We got Engineer Patty in the house as well. hey And now it is time for Big T's Five Minutes of Fame. You all know Big T. He is a longtime resident and leader in the Santa Clarita Valley. He's an executive and philanthropist, and he is the quintessential family man and community member. He is also currently in first place in his fantasy ping pong league. He's mom's favorite. Big T, welcome to the show. What up, Maddie? Hey. What up, boys? hey hey <laughs> All right. All right. I, I tell you what. I will keep score. Um, it... <laughs> Engineer Andrew is the reigning champion. Uh, he, he smacked us around the last time he was in here. He's a busy guy. Can't always get into the studio. And, and so he, he let us beat up on athletic director Nolan last time, I think. <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, be, before we get started with the trivia, Matt, I do have a couple of fun things. And, you know, I'm not trying to mock anything, but I'm a little fired up from the doctor this morning. And I'm also happy to see things. Big T's a big silver lining guy. Right. And I know the pandemic is real and, and my heart goes out. I have family members that, that suffered through it, but... But I am seeing some good things. Can I share some? Well, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, now we're starting to get vaccinated, which is good. But we kind of feel like superheroes now, right? Yeah. Like, hey, Matt and I are both vaccinated. We're going to Salt Creek. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Running around like Ninos Chirisikas, no? <laughs> right, Ninos Chirisikas. But it is but it is nice to feel that way instead of looking at everybody like they're dirty, like, oh, they might have the Rona. And, you know, back in those times, Matt, did you know how you can tell the difference between people that – you should probably stay away from you shouldn't yeah, anybody you don't know or you don't like they probably have it but your friends <laughs> and family hey no way they got it right, <laughs> right it's uncle billy right. he ain't got the rona <laughs> right and you know I, i'm gonna miss watching every facebook post and criticizing people for not wearing their masks um and, and just like everybody else i became a science expert on this stuff right, <laughs> All right. i'm also i'm also gonna hate going to the supermarket and you know, I'm still wearing my mask, but, you know, you walk in, you forget it, the, the little side strap breaks, and then you got to pull your shirt up and cover your face, and then everybody sees Big T's belly, and that's not a good thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then just, just some annoying things, you know, those DUI checkpoints that they've had set up, you know, not, not in the community. I'm talking about the other night there was one at the end of my hallway just past the bathroom right before you get to the bedroom. And then last <laughs> week there was one by the back gate next to the garage, and I'm like, and she's checking me everywhere I go. <laughs> and, but but I am I am happy to be married. I certainly wouldn't want to be dating during the pandemic. But I guess there could be a little bit of good that comes with that. I mean, if you're that if you're that woman that doesn't want to talk to that creepy guy at a party, I mean, you just wear your mask and you like sneeze twice, and nobody will talk to you. The rest of the <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but I do I do have to say probably the worst of everything with this whole pandemic, Matt is being in the produce department at the supermarket and trying to open those little bags without being able to lick your fingers. Oh. I mean, and of course you look around, right? Like, can I, can I slide under the mask? But right. you don't want to do it. No, you know what I do, Big T? Of- you know what I do? I, that, that struggle is real, right? Because I've, yes, I've, I've thought about it, but I just, I run over real quick and I run my fingers across the lettuce and then I, it's real easy. Yeah, you got to yeah. kind, of, kind of wait for those sprinklers to come on, right? Do the little crab walk. <laughs> <laughs> do the crab walk, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Perfect. So let's get let's get rolling. We all know the rules, right? Yep, we got um, it. Yep. Question one. Your, your your name is your buzzer. Yep. A, HG is the chemical symbol for what element? Say oh. it again. HG is the chemical symbol uh, for which element? Uh, um. No. Wait. Um. Andrew. No. Is it? Andrew. Is that? Is it silver? No. Because it's. I no. Need to cool. one. No. <laughs> Chemistry is my worst my. subject. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm out. It is. It is mercury. Mercury. Well, yeah, of course. Okay. Silver. What's silver? Which, silver which country produces the most coffee in the world? Frogger. Andrew. Frogger than Andrew. Indonesia. Incorrect. Colombia. Andrew. 
Incorrect. Oh, oh. Ooh. Um. I guess I'll just I'll go for uh, I'll go for a guess. Uh, um. Brazil. I don't know. I don't... Brazil is correct. No <laughs> way. Uh, he didn't uh, ring in there. So. Yeah, right. Well, I was the last. Well, I was the la- I was the last one left. I don't need to. Okay. okay. Hang on. We're checking with the judges. The judges say they'll allow it because it's Patty. <laughs> Come on. That was a good poll. I guess that. I had no idea. All right, which song by Luis Fonzi and Daddy Yankee uh, has Andrew. the most views of all? Uh, <laughs> Despacito. Uh, Despacito. Uh, okay. Andrew, do you like the reggaeton? I do, I do. You I know what, when I was down in Puerto Rico, somebody told me that, that many of us on the mainland mistakenly think that reggaeton is a genre of music, and it's not. It's just one long song that started in 1996 <laughs> and hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped. Yeah, yeah. It'll never stop. Right. All righty, what was the first U.S. state? Frogger. Frogger. Delaware. Delaware is correct. Boom. Ooh. That was not a guess. All right. <laughs> true or false? Patty. <laughs> Joe Biden. Patty. True. Frogger. It is true. Uh, yes. Biden was <laughs> oh, feeling lucky today, boys. Okay, you got to let him read the question, though, Patty. <laughs> Joe Biden was 29 years old when elected as a U.S. senator. He wow. didn't turn 30 until he took office, which is the age requirement. Wow. wow. So it is true. And that was 77 years ago, wasn't it? Wow. <laughs> About that. <laughs> Producer Sarah is listening. I, qu- I caution you. Okay. What is, what is the capital city of Spain? Frogger. Frogger. Barcelona. Uh, no. no. Patty. It, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Patty. Madrid. Madrid. Look at Patty. Boom. With the Check of the this scores. One was not, this one was not a guess. I knew that one. Spanish <laughs> class, I got you. Check it. Oh, actually, I think <laughs> I think producer Sarah got it in on the chat faster than that. But right. but we're going to give it to you. <laughs> Check the score. I'm looking at her. Patty <laughs> is in the lead. Three to one to one. Here we go. <laughs> what is the painting La Gioconda most commonly known as? Frogger. Frogger. Is it the Mona Lisa? It is the Mona Lisa. Oh. Wow. <laughs> From the sitcom Friends, what's Chandler's last name? Patty. Patty. Frogger. Patty. Bing. Chandler Bing. It, it is Bing. Chandler Bong. <laughs> that's, <laughs> no, no. That's Miss Chandler Bong. <laughs> Who's the coolest Star Wars character? Frogger. Mm, okay. that's, a, that, right. that's debatable, though. <laughs> Frogger. Chewy. Incorrect. Patty? Patty. Darth Vader? That is correct. Ooh, uh, okay. ooh that's my favorite. Are we too. seriously giving All him right. a point for this? Listen, I'm a nerd. Of course <laughs> I know this one. <laughs> All right. Baseball terms. Fast money. Okay. Oh, What's uh-huh. the cycle? Frogger. Andrew. Frogger. And then Andrew. Ooh. Okay. So the Man, cycle is when you hit for a single, double, triple, and home run in the same game. Absolutely. What's a cup of coffee? Frogger. Frogger. It's a short stay in the major leagues. That is correct. With a pickle. <laughs> Frogger. I heard Andrew that time. I think uh, so, yeah. Uh, base runner getting caught between bases. and then That is correct. Yeah. And then the ensuing what, silliness, often, yeah. <laughs> what's often referred to as free baseball? Frogger. Mm. <laughs> we're glaring <laughs> at each other like we're <laughs> I saw that. Go ahead, go ahead. Matt. No, Big T, can I get a ruling? Andrew. All right, uh, I heard Andrew. Extra first. innings. Extra inning baseball, correct. Yeah. What's the hot corner? Frogger. Mm. <laughs> Frogger. Third base. Yeah. Third base. Yeah. What's what's warning track power? Frogger. Frogger. It's the kind of power I had in little league. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's where you can you can hit the ball almost far enough to get a home run, but still just fly out to center. Almost. What's a basket catch? Frogger. I, Frogger. It's where an outfield, well, typically an outfielder catches the ball underhanded or below their shoulders. Correct. Correct. <laughs> back to back to trivia. What what name is rapper Sean Combs better known as? Andrew. Patty. Oh, Andrew. He's got this one. Um. Well, we're we going Puff Daddy, P Diddy. He's just covering Diddy them Combs. all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll take that. We'll take that. I, I think the next Diddy one he's going with is no pity. <laughs> <laughs> no pity for no Patty. Pity. <laughs> That, that's actually a good rap, rap name. Right? Okay, for Patty. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be mine. Which, which country invented tea? Frogger. Frogger. China? Correct. Woo. Oh, yeah, huh. 
<laughs> Which is the only vowel on a standard keyboard that is not on the top line of letters? Andrew. Frogger. No, Andrew. no, 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 no. As he looks down at his laptop. It, no, ahead, I was ahead. doing it. I was doing it too. You were first. I was doing it too, though. Andrew was first. Andrew was first. Oh, no! It. Uh, I'm gonna go. Nope. I. I is incorrect. Any of you cheaters want to guess? <laughs> Patty. Patty. A. A. A is correct. <laughs> what, did, what did Jeff? What did Jeff Spicoli spend his reward money on? In Frogger. Times Frogger. Frogger. Oh. Frogger. He had a party in his backyard where he hired Van Halen to play. <laughs> that is correct. All right, Hamilton. <laughs> I love that movie. What's your favorite TV show? Frogger. Well, that's debatable. Frogger. Mash. Incorrect. No, it's not. <laughs> Patty, you want to chime in? Uh, it's, what's what's whose favorite TV? Just mine in general. Your TV show, yes. My my t- favorite TV show would probably be Friends, man. That is cor- that is correct. Hey, <laughs> oh, all right. We're giving how, long, how long does it take? Far out. Okay. <laughs> how long does it take to boil an egg? Frogger. Oh. Frogger. Seven minutes. Seven minutes is correct. <laughs> who's the only major league team to never play in a World Series? Oh. Never play? Love this question. Oh, Andrew, did you chime in? No, no, no. He was guessing to okay. her talking to himself. Um, I'll give you hints if you want. It's a good question. G- 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 American League. Frogger. Okay, it's AL. Frogger. Is it the Mariners? It is the Mariners. Mariners. Seattle Mariners. Oh, and, I, and, and uh, I like Seattle because the Seahawks. Dang it. <laughs> in, 2000, in 2020, who led the Dodgers in home runs with 16? Frogger. Frogger. Justin Turner. It was JT. Incorrect. No, Andrew. Not. Was it the uh, senior? Andrew. It's Corey. Incorrect. Wait. It was on yesterday's Dodger broadcast. Was it, uh, was, is it Muncy? Incorrect. It's an outfielder. You want to go around again? <sighs> okay. Bellinger. Cody. Incorrect. Wait. wait Mookie. Wait, wait, it was Mookie. Mookie's? Wait. wait it was, incorrect. It's, oh. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> wait, Chris Taylor? Incorrect. <laughs> I'm so okay. lost right now. AJ Pollock. AJ Pollock. Oh, you can't. It was Pollock? That's what crazy. a great question, huh? Wow. wow. I didn't even know you had that many. How many baseball games are there in a season? Andrew. Oh, what kind of change Andrew. is Wait. now? Ooh. Oh, dude. 162. 162 is correct. In a perfect game, how many batters does a pitcher Andrew. Mm. Andrew. 27. 27 is correct. Matt, you're right. 24 if you're the... No, you still got to face 27. Um, <laughs> who did the Dodgers beat in the 2020 World Series? Frogger. Petty. I heard Frogger first. Yeah. The Dang Tampa it. Bay Rays. Oh, it's so the obvious. Tampa Bay Rays. What's the most popular food at baseball games? Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. Uh, okay, it's between two. I'm going to go hot dog. Hot dog is correct. I was going to say Dodger right. dog. In 1968... <laughs> Okay, 1968. Who set the mark for 58 scoreless innings? Oh, Frogger. Oh, shit. Frogger. Sandy Koufax? Incorrect. 58. You got the team right. Ooh. <sighs> um, I think I know it. Andrew. Wait, that's even Andrew. further. I was going to go Drysdale, but no. Yeah, that is correct. Hey! <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey. I, okay, yes. I Wait did a minute. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. It's it's five minutes of fame, not fifty minutes of fame. Right? <laughs> Speaking of which, how are we doing on time, Patty? We're actually coming up pretty close. We got about less than two minutes. Left. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up. <laughs> Patty did a had a pretty good showing. Still ended up with seven. Maddie, Engineer Andrew Maddie. with eight. What's that? Back into that question: Who broke the record with fifty nine? Uh, the bulldog. Her there. Yeah. Yes, that's okay, it. Okay, we do All have right. to we do have to wrap it up. I did take the day with twelve today. <laughs> Strong of comeback course. at the end. Big T, as always, thanks for popping by. I'd like to thank Dr. Bud Lawrence from Henry Mayo and Wendy Ruiz from Little Eye Leaders Preschool. Big T, Engineer Patty, Engineer Andrew, Producer Sarah, and thank you for listening. Want you to stick around. Phil Nordella's coming up. He's going to let you know if it's time to sell, time to buy, or time to hold your cards. Join us again next week and every Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. I am Matt Watson. This is SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. <laughs>